Hey plant nerds, welcome back to my channel. Today's drink of choice is this signature select seltzer water in the flavor lime. I'm currently in the process of doing Whole30. I am now on day 11 and it is going really well, but I cannot drink alcohol while doing this. It was a struggle, not the drinking, but just the Whole30. It was a struggle for a few days, but I'm actually doing really well now and it's pretty easy. I am excited to see what happens after these 30 days and how my eating habits have changed and how I look at food differently, hopefully, and consume a lot less sugar. Now, in today's video, we are going to talk about my favorite genus of all, and that is the Hoya genus. I went through and documented every single Hoya that I own, so I wanted to take this video today and just show you my Hoya collection. So if you enjoy Hoyas, then please stick around, hang out with me, and check out all of my plants that I'm going to show you. To start this video out, I'm gonna pull out the big boy, the OG, my first ever Hoya. Okay. So this is actually my first ever Hoya that I have owned. It is... a Hoya Carnosa, just the regular green form. You might be able to say this is a splash because it does have speckling on its leaves. It's just not super splashy. But this Hoya was in the care of my sister and then uh, she had to move and it wasn't originally her plant. I believe it was her roommate's plant, but she asked if I wanted it and it was kind of at the beginning of my plant collecting. The thought of a beautiful big plant like this just going uncared for really hurt my heart. <laughs> so I said yes, I would take it. So my dad and my stepmom brought this plant to me from Nebraska when I was in Illinois. The sheer size of it stressed me out a lot. It has grown so well for me. When I moved to Arizona, I decided to put it up on a trellis. So I actually have two three foot U-shaped bamboo trellis together and I kind of have all the vines just tied up into it. So that was the best way that I could think of to keep it in my space and also kind of keep it a little more compact and not taking over everything. But this Hoya sparked my love and my fascination with this genus. So I'm really glad that my sister and my stepmom decided to gift this Hoya to me because this was the Hoya that started it all. Next up is my Hoya carii. This is another plant that I have on this tall bamboo trellis, but this Hoya carii I only had as like a one vine plant and it's shot off another large vine from the original one and they're both still growing. So I love how this one looks. The new leaves that have come out on this one are a little bit, they're just kind of odd shaped and a little bubbly, but it still seems pretty healthy. Next up is my Hoya Obovada Splash, possibly Splash. I mean, it's definitely speckled. This plant has grown exponentially since it's been in Arizona. When I first was moving here with this plant, it was maybe just a few leaves down here and it's full on exploded into this very tall, very thick, Obovada, and I'm so excited about it. I love this plant. I love how it is on the trellis, and I can't wait to just keep wrapping these vines around to just make this very full tower structure of Obovada. This one also sits in an east window exactly where the carii sits and seems very happy there as well. Next up is this Hoya Pubicalix Royal Hawaiian Purple, and this Hoya is my last kind of very tall trellised up Hoya. This was a Hoya that I unboxed in one of my first unboxings on YouTube. It was from Steve's Leaves. And this thing has grown really well. It's the only tall Hoya that I have that is in passive hydroponics. So this one is currently growing in Lekka. You can see it's in a net pot. And how I figured out how to trellis plants that are in net pots is a little bit of a trick. So what I have done is actually just zip tied 
the trellis into the net pot and then I go ahead and fill it with LECA and add the plant in. So that's how I trellis my plants that are in passive hydroponics for now. I do need to think of a better system and I have a couple ideas that I'm gonna try for bigger plants and mostly my philodendron that I have in passive hydro because I need to give them a support pole to grow on and I don't necessarily want it to be a bamboo pole. So we're gonna figure that out, stay tuned. The next Hoya I want to talk about is my Hoya Carnosa Chelsea. This Hoya was also featured on my YouTube channel rather early on. I talked about cuttings that I was going to pot up and that is this plant right here. It has also grown quite well for me and continues to put out new growth. Every once in a while, I'll see a vine grow like you can see here and it kind of stays stagnant for a bit and then all of a sudden the leaves will just start popping out left and right. So for the most part, this Hoya has been very happy. Again, this one is also in an east window. I would say the majority of my Hoya are in an east facing window and somewhat supplemented by a grow light. The next Hoya I wanna talk about is my Hoya Fuwaensis. This beauty was actually a gift, unexpected Hoya from an order I placed from a Russian seller. I am absolutely in love with this Hoya. The leaf texture, the coloration on it, everything about this Hoya I just love. I've never seen it flower and I'm excited for it to do that eventually down the line. But for right now, it seems very happy. This one is also in LECA and it's growing very well. The next Hoya we have is the Hoya Verticillata, Verticulata, formerly the Hoya Wibergier. And this Hoya, was another one that I got from the Russian Hoya seller. The leaves are splashed with silver. However, in direct sun or very bright light, it will turn pink. And that is exactly what this one is doing. When I had it under my grow light, it was very, very bright pink. Right now it's a little bit dull and that's okay because I kind of moved it away from that grow light and put it in the east window. This one is also in LECA. It seems really happy in LECA, so we're just gonna keep it in here and see how these new leaves develop and hopefully fill up this trellis. Next Hoya is my Hoya SP Sabah. If you remember from that unboxing video I did, when I unboxed this plant, it was just these two leaves. It has grown out this entire vine and it has put out one leaf on that vine. A lot of the other leaves that started, one was actually pretty long, but it just kind of fell off. I don't know if you would call that leaf blast. I think you would. I'm still unsure why they just develop about this far and then fall off. I am grateful, however, for this one leaf that decided to not jump ship. The next Hoya I wanna talk about is the Hoya Lacanosa. This Hoya is definitely one of my more prolific blooming Hoyas. I've actually had this one bloom already and the peduncle that it bloomed off of is already growing a new bud. A little PSA for you with your Hoyas, once they bloom and they're finished, do not cut off the peduncles because most Hoya, not all, but most of them will rebloom on the same peduncle. Next up is my Hoya Compacta and this is just the green form of the Hoya Compacta. This plant is another plant with history. This came from my stepmom's plant. So they were cuttings that I propagated, but she received cuttings from my uncle's plant that she has grown her plant from. So it came from my uncle and then my stepmom, and now I have a piece of it. It grows pretty slow. I haven't seen a lot of action happening on this plant in particular. A long time ago, it kind of grew a peduncle and then it just kind of stopped. I will say that I have forgotten to water this one for quite some time. So that's probably mostly my fault as to why it's not really showing the growth. It's still happy. The leaves are healthy. It hasn't lost any leaves. So I'm gonna still count that as a win. Next up is my Hoya Wayetii variegata. This plant came from a trade that I did with an Instagram friend. And I'm so grateful that she sent it to me because I'm absolutely in love with this beauty. This whole plant is started from one single vine and off that vine offshoot is this 
completely non-variegated section of the plant, and then a bunch of vines of variegation that you can see here has a little bit of pink color, but you have the green, pink, white, cream, all of those beautiful colors mixed. I love that there, you kind of have both versions of the plant on one vine. So I haven't cut that off. I don't think I will cut it off. It also is supplying a lot of energy to this plant. As long as the variegated section keeps growing, which it has, it's putting off new vines constantly, I am going to leave this green version here to photosynthesize for the non-photosynthesizing parts of this plant. Another Hoya that I'm extremely proud of and so happy to have in my collection is this beefy Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. I got this plant at Walmart for $10. $10 back in central Illinois. I'm so happy I have it. This plant has grown so well. It is the feature of one of my favorite time-lapse videos I have ever done about plants growing. Just an all-around stunner. Next up is probably one of the strangest and weirdest Hoyas that I have in my collection, but this is the Hoya Imbricata. And this is a newer Hoya to me. I currently have it just in sphagnum moss. I am waiting to mount it because these Hoya are shingling Hoya. If they don't have anything to climb, they will do exactly what you see here and they kind of fold their leaves in almost like a taco. I do plan on mounting this because I love how they look shingling up. The very, very exciting thing about this Hoya is that I just the other day noticed it was putting out a new vine since it's been in my care and I'm really, really excited about that. The next Hoya I have here is the Hoya Crinkle 8 and this is another version of the Carnosa, I believe. The leaves, the foliage on this plant are so unique. It has that, obviously that crinkle, those indentations. This one has grown very well for me. This one is still in soil but it is putting out new growth and new vines all the time. And I'm just so excited that this thing is happy. This one actually kind of sits in a north slash northwest facing window. For some reason, I thought that Hoya needed a lot of really, really bright indirect light. And it's true they do. Most Hoya really like bright indirect light, but apparently that's bright. The north slash northwest window is bright enough for this little babe. Next is another one of my prolific blooming Hoyas, which is the Hoya Retusa. This little baby has put out so many blooms. It kind of is reaching the end of its blooming pattern. There's a couple of peduncles still growing out. This Retusa is such a strange looking Hoya. It's almost like a Ripsalis, but it's like this grass-like, weed-like Hoya, and I'm absolutely in love with it. I got this from Gabriella Plants, and it's just been thriving here in my care. Again, this one sits in a north slash northwest window. It does get really cool in the spot that it's sitting in at night over this winter, which is why I think it bloomed so much. I mean, this bloomed a lot. But yeah, this is just one of those just really like unique Hoyas, and I'm so happy I have it. Next up on the Hoya list is my Hoya SP Affinity Bertinet. This, oh, this little velvety babe, I swear th these leaves are so soft and so velvety, but I absolutely love how these leaves look. They have this beautiful green color, but then the outer edges almost have this purple hue, this purple line to them. Um, this is another one that sits in the north, northwest facing window and is very happy. It's put off tons of new growth. When I first bought this plant, it was maybe just that section and it's now grown all of this. Growing like a champ. Next for my north slash northwest window facing Hoya is this beautiful Hoya Crimson Queen. Always remember that it's a queen because the queen has the variegation on the outside. So like the crown, the variegations on the crown. The princess has it on the inside and I do not own a princess. I just have the queen because, well, she's the queen. This Hoya is such a beautiful plant and I absolutely love, you can see here this new growth that is coming out is such a bright pink color. Now this one is putting out a vine of all white leaves, which is usually kind of a death sentence, but the vine that that is growing on 
is this vine that has a bunch of other leaves that still have some chlorophyll that are still photosynthesizing. So these white leaves, while beautiful, they're just sucking energy from this plant, but I'm gonna leave it because they're beautiful and I will let them fade away on their own. This plant is also in Lekka and has actually really been doing well with it. Before I converted it, the growth was pretty slow and after I converted it, it started shooting out a bunch of new growth. And you can see how many roots have grown in this net pot since I put it in passive hydro. So it's very happy in the current situation. And I am glad that it's finally putting out new growth for me. How you doing? Tired yet? I'm a little tired. I have to keep like getting up and down. Whew, woof. I also wish I could have a drink of bourbon right now because this feels so wildly strange without having my bourbon. Next up is the first ever plant I've ordered from Logies, and this is the Hoya Croniana Eskimo. However, it's not very Eskimo, and I don't know if maybe they all were like that. I'm not sure. Like I said, this is my first order from Logies, and it came in pretty rough shape. It's bouncing back a lot now, but it did lose a lot of leaves while it was shipping. It's got lots of new growth pushing out. I'm not gonna hold my breath. And if it doesn't, that's fine too, because it's still a beautiful plant. And I still absolutely love the shape and the texture on each one of these leaves. And sticking with the Hoya Croniana, I have another version of that same plant, the Hoya Croniana black leaf. And this one is so dark. I love how the leaves are colored on this plant. This one is growing really well for me. It's a newer plant in my care. It's still in soil. So I will probably transfer this one to Lekka the next time I need to water it because I find converting a Hoya is a lot easier when the plant needs to be watered or when the soil has dried. I'm so excited for this plant to grow and see how these leaves develop and change color over time. It's just such a beautiful plant. Next up is another new and um, very exciting Hoya for me, which is the Hoya Sunrise. Now this Hoya is a cross between Hoya Obscura and Hoya Lacunosa, or a certain species of Hoya Lacunosa. Um, the Hoya Obscura is a beautiful plant that has this red, this bright red, orange, fall-like colors to its leaves when it's a bit sun-stressed. So this Hoya Sunrise does about the same thing. You can tell some of these leaves have a red texture to them, a red coloring. I haven't stressed this plant out enough with the sun to create its bright red foliage, but even without that red foliage, it's still such a beautiful Hoya. And another Hoya that is a cross between a Hoya Obscura and a Hoya Lacunosa species is this Hoya Rebecca. This little babe has grown so well and it actually is putting off its first peduncle here. I know that's really hard for you to see, but you can kind of see it right where my pinky is pointing. Uh, 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 uh. Someone commented on one of my videos or my Instagram that this flower on this plant smells like poop. And I believe they said, or at least a fart. I don't know. I've talked to a few people who have a Hoya Rebecca and they say the flowers are as perfumey or smells good just like the Hoya Lacanosa. So I don't know if maybe it was a different species of Lacanosa that theirs was crossed with. In any case, these flowers are developing really well. So I'm excited for them to fully grow so I can see if it smells like poop or not. I mean, I gotta know. Next, we have my Hoya Linearis. This Hoya was not growing well for me in soil. When I bought this plant, it had a couple really nice vines and I had it in a small pot with soil and it started growing really well at first and then it just kind of stopped out of nowhere. I mean, it was just not putting out any new leaves. It wasn't doing anything. So finally I decided to uproot it and check and see what was going on below the surface. All of the roots had rotted off of this plant. I'm not an overwaterer. I rinsed off the soil from those roots and I immediately just stuck it into Lekka and this thing has grown like crazy. I always thought it was a cool looking Hoya, but I didn't realize it was fuzzy that there was texture to these leaves until it arrived and it made me fall even more in love with it. 
Another Hoya that I found at Walmart back in central Illinois was this Hoya Curtisii. I will say though, this Hoya has been one of the more difficult Hoyas for me. I don't know if that's a common thing with the Curtisii. The foliage on this plant feels a lot like the Hoya Fuwaensis, where it's almost like this cardboard texture, but it's this beautiful spade shaped leaves. As long as I'm seeing new growth develop on this, I feel like I'm doing my job or I'm doing all that I can. And it is growing a lot of new vines and leaves, so it seems pretty content. This next Hoya is the Hoya Macrophylla Variegata. And this, oh, this one, <laughs> this is another plant I got from Gabriella Plants Online. And this one just has not grown well for me. I don't know if it's the conditions. I might need to give it more light. It has grown a few new leaves, like this is a new leaf. For the most part, it's literally just been stagnant. It's not dying, it hasn't lost leaves but it's just, it's kind of like at the status quo where it's just chilling. It's a little bit frustrating. It's still a beautiful plant. I love the texture on the foliage. It's got this beautiful pattern on these leaves, the variegation, the pink, the cream, the green, all of it. I just absolutely love this plant. I wish I could keep it happier though. Here we have a just regular Hoya Wayetii. I do love how the new growth on this plant comes out a bit more like purple tinged the whole leaf. This Hoya did struggle a bit when I first had it in my care. It has since grown accustomed to Leca and actually seems quite happy now in its new home. And this has also been an easy one to propagate and take to plant swaps and give to friends, etc. Next, we have this beautiful Hoya obovata variegata. I love the Hoya obovata and then the variegated version of it is also just so beautiful. It's putting out a lot of growth here. This entire stem here has been new growth since it's arrived. These leaves are a little bit kind of twisted and folded, but that kind of seems pretty common for this plant. I don't know if it's the variegation that causes the issues with leaf development or if it's something I'm doing. It did start putting out a vine of non-variegated. You can see this leaf right here is not a variegated leaf. And again, I might be weird, but I kind of like that. I kind of like that we have this original vine that split off a whole variegated section this way and is now putting off a non-variegated section this way. I think it's unique. I like having plants with a little bit of character and that to me is a little bit of character. So I'm gonna leave it. Oh yeah. This is my Hoya Dekie. Dekiai, Dekie. This actually was one of my most recent time-lapse videos as well. I time-lapsed this whole leaf growing. And it's very unique with Hoya is everyone thinks that they're such slow growers and it's true they are kind of slow, but once a leaf starts to develop, it actually grows pretty quickly. Waiting for it to develop does take some time. This uh, Dekie is... I'm so happy I have it. These new leaves have quite a bit of speckles on them, so that's really cool to watch develop as it grows. I mean, just look at that texture on the leaf. It's got abs. Anyway, I'm really excited about this plant becoming a nice full plant, and hopefully I can then start propagating it and sharing it with folks. The next Hoya I have here is the newest Hoya to arrive in my care. And this came from the crazy plant man, Cody. He sent me these clippings in a very kind and generous surprise box of plants. This just kind of fell apart while I was filming, but it's a good spot for me to show you how this looks. Well, you can't really see. It has grown roots already on this cutting. Well, you can kind of tell by the root attaching itself to the leca here. So I clearly need to repot this, but I do want to say that propagating in leca, it can be done. I know a lot of people usually just do water or sphagnum moss, but I stick cuttings directly into leca with a mixture of Super Thrive with my water, and it seems to root plants really quickly. This Matilda, Matilda is a uh, Hoya carnosa crossed with Hoya serpens. So they've combined the two plants into this beautiful, tiny, circular babe. And I absolutely love this plant. I was so excited to get these cuttings from Cody. So Cody, if you're watching this, thank you again. I absolutely love these. And they are doing quite well so far. Next on the Hoya list is this Hoya breviolata. This 
beautiful little babe came from Steve's leaves. It's put off a bunch of new growth so far since it's been here. It's got these cupped shaped leaves, almost like a deschidia or like most deschidia. It's shooting out at least six new vines here that I can see. So it seems very happy. This one is in soil still and will be a conversion once it needs to be watered. Another very, very exciting Hoya in my collection is this beautiful Hoya Carnosa Compacta Reverse Variegated Hindu Rope or the Mauna Loa, Mauna Loa. I received this from my friend Phil who is local here. She gave me this in a plant swap and it was just this kind of little section of the Hoya and this entire vine right here is all brand new, I would say within the last few months. So this one has grown really, really extremely well for me in LECA. It's shot off this entire vine. The variegation on this plant is just beautiful. You have this very pink stem with this inner variegation all throughout. That's just, it's just stunning. So this is one of those Hoya that I'm very, very lucky to have. Next up is another newish Hoya to me that is growing incredibly, incredibly well in LECA is this Hoya rotundifolia. I absolutely love the foliage in this plant. It gets its name because these leaves are rectangle and they're actually, when they're small, they're a bit fuzzy. This one has shot out this entire new vine that was not here when I put it into Leca, and it seems so happy. It's in, again, an east window, so it's gonna continue to grow. I'm really excited about this plant. It, like I said, it was a really, really small baby plant. It was only in sphagnum, so the conversion was really easy, and it's been really happy sitting in Leca now. Next, we have my Hoya Australis Lisa. This Hoya Australis is such a beautiful plant and when these leaves first developed they were so pink. They were, you can still see a little bit of pink in them now, but as baby leaves they were just radiant pink. This is none of the Hoya that when I saw it at first I thought the leaves were probably more flexible, a little bit more fragile, but they're not. These are solid leaves. And sticking with Hoya Australis, I have this beautiful Hoya Australis Albo Marginata, which is basically just outer variegated. It doesn't have any pink in the stems. So this Australis, when I first found it, I didn't think it was anything too special. I actually probably thought it was the Australis Lisa, but the more I've owned it, I just really absolutely love this plant. I don't see a lot of different versions of the Hoya Australis outside of the green form or the Lisa. But this Alba Marginata, I'm so happy. I have two of these actually. I have this one that's still in soil and I have another one in Leca. I wanted to see how the growing conditions would work because this Hoya is one of the slower growing Hoyas. I absolutely love this leaf right here. It's a half moon leaf, half white, half green. Ugh. It's so cute. The variegation in this is more cream colored than it is white. And I have had it put off a few leaves that are, you can kind of see green on the back of this leaf, but on the front of it, you don't see much. I have had it put off quite a few white leaves that eventually just kind of fall off, but it still seems content with its home and surroundings. And I'm just so grateful to have this one. This next Hoya is a Hoya Marillii and this, little babe has put off some major new leaves. The new leaves that have grown on this plant are very large. Well, not huge, but they're larger than the previous leaves. And they were very red. This is another one of those Hoyas that when it's sun stressed will put out this great, beautiful burgundy red color. I've pulled it back out of that window a bit. So the color has faded, the red has faded out of it. You can still kind of see it along the edges of some of these leaves. Again, the green form, the non-color, the non-red, the non-anthocyanins in this plant still make it a beautiful plant. And I absolutely love the sheen that it has and the texture of these leaves. Okay, we're at the second to last Hoya. It's a marathon, people, it's a marathon. My second to last, and also probably my second favorite Hoya out of all of these is this beautiful Hoya Serpens. I unboxed a piece of this plant on IGTV over on Instagram. 
and it was a small cutting of the serpents and it's grown really well i put it right in leka after unboxing it it's it put out a bunch of new vines mostly all of this stuff here and then this company called the violet barn sporadically has hoya serpents for sale online for eight dollars a for a two inch pot. So I bought a couple of those to combine to make a fuller pot in this and they are growing so well together. Like I said, this is in Lekka. You can see all of these vines shooting up. That is all new growth on this serpens. Three or four peduncles that I can see on here. I have not had this flower yet in my care, but hopefully these peduncles will form buds and flower. I can only imagine how tiny and freaking adorable the flowers are in this plant because these leaves are so tiny and adorable. And now we have reached the end, my friends. And if you've made it this far in this video, thank you. Thank you so much. I know it's probably not always fun to just watch my face or head talk and tell you Hoya names. And there's a lot of Hoya here, 36 to be exact. I really wanted to show you my Hoya collection and I really hope you've enjoyed this so far. If you follow me on Instagram, this favorite Hoya will be no surprise to you. You've watched me unbox this from my Russian Hoya video. My all time right now favorite Hoya is this Hoya Obovada Variegata Splash. Oh. oh, I mean, every single time I look at this plant, I am just in awe of how beautiful it is. The splash on these leaves is just so silvery, so chunky, so visible. The leaves are doing what the variegated obovada is doing, which is kind of like just a little crinkly, little foldy, a little wonky. I don't even care. There is a peduncle forming right between these two brand new leaves up here. Again, this is another one that I really hope I can get to flower because I really wanna see what they look like. I wanna smell them. I want to enjoy them. I want to brag about them. <laughs> so yeah, here we are, my favorite. And this, this particular Hoya is the entire reason that I actually have any of my plants in passive hydroponics. This Hoya is the entire reason I use Leka. It's the entire reason that all of these plants are doing so well in Leka. because when I bought this plant, I immediately was filled with anxiety on, I spent too much money on this tiny plant. I don't want it to die. I wanna give it the best life possible. Up until this Hoya here, I had a few Hoyas in soil, but they weren't thriving. And I don't know if it was my watering schedule, how I cared for them, etc. but they weren't super happy. And as soon as I bought this one, I knew that I needed to figure out how to make the Hoya happy. And I decided that I was gonna try Passive Hydro because of some Instagram friends, Jackie's Jungle in the Desert, the most beautiful Hoya out of anybody I've seen in the desert. She's here in Phoenix. I know that she grew some of her plants in Lekka. I sent her a message, I asked her if she thought that that was a good growing medium for the plant, for the longevity of the plant, for the long term. So I decided to try Lekka with my most expensive Hoya that I've ever purchased, which was a risk and it's paid off because this plant is so happy. My other Hoyas that are in Lekka are so happy. I mean, you can just see by the roots, like this thing has put out so many roots. So I am very grateful to this Hoya Obovada splash, this variegated splash. Thank you, you beautiful bastard. We did it. Guys, guess what? We're finished. That's all my Hoya. If you stuck this out, thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. You have no idea how much warm fuzzies you give me. Go ahead and click that like button, that thumbs up. Click that subscribe button if you haven't. I mean, I'm guessing you have clicked it because you are here this long and I'm obviously done showing plants. But as always, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Thanks for watching.